Hello and welcome to Wednesday's lesson in our cutting cake series talking about multiplying fractions. I'm so glad you're here joining us for this recorded video. Um, I hope to see you soon in one of our live synchronous classes. Uh, but if you missed today's class, no worries. Everything you'll need is right here. It's still college week, so I am repping my Belmont University t-shirt. Um, look for me the rest of this week in other college gear as well. Um, but we're going to dive on in. Let's start with our agenda for today. There are five things on our agenda, but we're going to go ahead right now and cross off number five. So that only leaves us with four things. The first thing, and we're crossing out number five because five has become a part of four. The first thing, we will have a welcoming activity. Then we're going to review and write down some collective notes. That's notes that we have come up with together about reviewing how to multiply fractions. Then third, we'll take a moment and breathe in our math class and just make sure we're work focusing on our breath and not getting overwhelmed. And we're going to practice some skills on what to do when you're feeling stressed or anxious or possibly just even overexcited. Uh, and then number four, we'll do a fraction task, which will also turn into five our exit tickets. We're combining four and five today. Well, let's get started. So our welcoming activity today is our Wednesday playlist. I want you to think about a song that you really like right now. Um, it can be pop, R&B, blues, country, rap, hip-hop, Christian, religious, wherever we're at. Um, it could be tough, it could be gentle, whatever you are feeling like right now, you are good. Uh, share that um, in a chat, a comment, or in a discussion post. I'd love to hear yours. Mine right now is my song that I chose for today is Wait For It by the Hamilton cast and crew from the Hamilton soundtrack. Um, I really enjoy it. It is from the Hamilton musical, which tells the story of Alexander Hamilton, one of the people who worked hard to create the foundation for the United States of America. Awesome. So we have, when we multiply fractions, we have three steps. Let's take a look at what those three steps are. So I'm going to take some notes with us. That didn't work the way I wanted it to, so we'll just do it this way. There we go. We are going to be multiplying fractions today. And we're just going to take our three notes so we make sure that we are all on the same page. So we're going to start by solving our first problem together. We have 2 times 1 fifth. Okay, so first, I know that I have to turn this 2 into a fraction. So I'm going to go ahead, I know my 2 is 2 wholes. So I'm going to put a 1 under there because 1 is the number we used to describe a whole. So now that I have 2 fractions, I know my next step is going to be to multiply the numerators. So I have 2 times 1, and 2 times 1 is 2. And then my third and final step right now is going to just be to multiply the bottom number. 1 times 5, and 1 times 5 is 5. So let's take a look at what we did here. Our first step was to make sure that we had two fractions. In order to multiply fractions, we had to make sure our whole number became a fraction. But our first step is to make sure we have two fractions. So if we have a whole number, we need to turn our whole number into a fraction. Our second step was to multiply the numerators. And as always, pause this video as much as you need to or want to. It is yours to do what you want with it. But our second step is to multiply the numerators. Those are the two top numbers. Multiply the numerators. This is where we did 2 times 1. I'm just going to put in parentheses that they are the top numbers. 
And then our third and final step when multiplying fractions was just to multiply the denominators. Or the bottom. Unlike when we're adding or subtracting fractions, our denominator can change. It didn't here, it was still five, but remember that one is also a denominator and that did change. So when we multiply fractions, our denominator can change, unlike in adding or subtracting fractions where the denominator stays the same. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Now that we have our answer, we're gonna, oh, I guess I should zoom out a little bit here so we can see everything all together. We are going to take our first number and compare it with our result. So our first number, we had two holes. Now I'm going to draw two whole cakes here. They're not going to be cut at all because each cake only has one slice and that means it is the whole thing. And I'm going to take my yellow marker and I'm going to shade in our two. So now we have our two our result was two fifths. And that was because when we multiplied each of these by one fifth, we were splitting each of the cakes into five pieces. One, two, three, four, five. And then we got one of each of those cakes. So when we multiply a whole by a fraction, we only get part of the entire thing now. We only get one fifth of each of those. So our answer is two fifths. For the top part we had two or two over one. And then we just had two fifths down here. Wait, hold up. When I'm looking at this, I see the number we started with appears to be smaller than the, the answer. So we started with two and then when we multiplied two times one fifth, our answer was two fifths. But when we multiply numbers, we usually think of them getting bigger. Two times four is eight. Eight is bigger than two. Six times four is 24. 24 is bigger than six. But when we multiply fractions, when we multiply a number by a fraction, our answer is smaller. So if you have room down here, we're going to write that down here. I didn't leave myself space, so I'm going to turn my paper sideways and write that on the side. And I'm going to start because this is an important thought that we're seeing for the first time. When we multiply by a fraction, our answer gets smaller. Interesting. So when we multiply a number by a part, because a fraction is part of a whole, when we multiply a number by a fraction, our answer, our result is smaller. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So now we have our three steps to multiply fractions. We make sure that we have two fractions. Then we're going to multiply the denominator, or sorry, multiply the numerator up top and then the denominators on the bottom. So first is to make sure we have two fractions. Second, we multiply the numerators, and then we will multiply the denominators. Those are our three steps when we are multiplying fractions. Awesome. So now we know our three steps for multiplying fractions. We're gonna take a moment to breathe. We're gonna start focusing a lot more on our mindfulness and our breathing in our math class. Every day we're going to pause and take a break to think of something calming or to work on our breathing or possibly even some stretching or movement. Um, we are going to do this because it will help us um, gauge control of our feelings and our emotions as well as either calm us down from being anxious, excited, or angry 
or it could build us up if we're feeling tired or lethargic. It could help us become more exciting. So it helps us meet somewhere in the middle. So I want us to together take three deep breaths. I'm going to count because I'm still working on this in my head. Four counts for in and four counts for out. But I will breathe with us. So we're going to take three deep breaths. Here we go. In and out. In and out. In, last one. And out. Awesome. I'm going to work on my leading our breathing or our mindful thinking. And I will get better as we work on this more. Because as we know, practice helps us get better. Um, but it's very important for us to remember our breathing and think about our feelings and our emotions outside of school and in school, whether we're at home or in an actual building. It's important for us to keep track of how we feel um, and what we think. So we're going to be checking in pretty regularly like this. Uh, but let's, it also is a great way to take a break in the middle of a class. But now let's dive on back in. And I have a math task for you to work on. Mrs. Washington cleans her. Wait, do you know Mrs. Washington? I don't know Mrs. Washington. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of that. She's gone. Whoops. Bye, Mrs. Washington. Let's try that again. Miss Rager. Now, you might not know Miss Rager, but she teaches eighth grade math here at Goodlesville Middle. She is awesome. I am excited that you will have her someday, but we're going to use her for our problem today. Miss Rager cleans her classroom on the last day of school and finds some pencils left over from the year. She knows there are 24 pencils in a full box. And for each question below, explain how you arrived at the number of pencils. So here's my box of pencils, but Miss Rager didn't find a whole box of pencils. Our first problem says Miss Rager finds three quarters of a box in her desk. When in her desk, I found three quarters of a box. I know that's going to be less than 24 pencils because there's 24 pencils in a whole box. But how many pencils did she find in her desk? So take some time, solve that, and then this is going to be part of your exit ticket. I'm going to ask you to send your three answers to me in a message on Schoology. So how many pencils did she find in her desk if she found three quarters of a box in her desk? Our second problem says she finds one and one eighth boxes in the closet. How many pencils does she find in the closet? So I really like this one because there's a whole number and a fraction. So what I did, what I, and I would recommend doing, is either drawing it out. I love drawing these problems. And then I knew that there's a whole box and then some more over here. So it was a box plus more. But see if you can figure this out and include that in your message to me. And then you have one more problem for this task. Ms. Rager keeps cleaning, and by the end of the day, she collects two and five-sixths boxes of pencils. How many pencils does she have total? Well, I know now she has two whole boxes and then some fractions. But I don't want to know how many boxes. I want to know how many pencils. So once you work through these, if you need help with these, send me a message on Schoology or a text or call, email. Um, but once you have your answers for these three problems, your exit ticket is just to send it in a message to me on Schoology. Um, I'll respond, help you out with that. If you have questions, let me know. Um, but I can't wait to get the message from you on Schoology for your exit ticket. Tell me how many pencils Ms. Rager found. I know Ms. Rager will be very happy to know that she found a lot of pencils. Awesome. You have done an amazing job. Um, as always, if there is anything I can do to help, please let me know. Other than that, have a great day, Trojans. Be on the lookout for our Thursday folder. There'll be your assignment for tomorrow in there. Um, and then I will see you back either live or in a video like this on Friday. Awesome. Goodbye, Trojans.